Hello and welcome to a special edition of The Big Picture. The hill state of Himachal Pradesh went to polls today to elect a new legislative assembly. Reports indicate that the polling percentage has been pretty high, with many more women coming out to vote. This state, which has had a BJP government over the last five years, has been voting out the incumbent governments ever since 1990. Therefore, one of the things to watch out when the results come out is whether the people of Himachal is going to maintain this trend or will do a neighbouring Punjab, which earlier this year overturned the same trend by re-electing Akali Dal BJP government back to power. The campaign in Himachal has witnessed many local issues coming to the fore, even as controversies surrounding both the BJP and Congress leadership over corruption allegations emerged. How far corruption is an issue in this election is a moot point. Inflation, of course, seems to have been a major issue. Whether anti-incumbency is a factor is also worth watching. Meanwhile, the results of this election are certainly of crucial importance to both the leading parties, the BJP and the Congress. The results, however, is one and a half month away and whether it was necessary for the election commission to schedule the Gujarat elections more than a month later is also an issue which needs to be discussed. To discuss this, I have with me today Nilotpal Basu, Central Committee member of the CPIM, which has shown more than keen interest in the elections in Himachal. Smita Gupta, Deputy Editor of the Hindu, Nilab Mishra, Editor of Outlook Hindi, and Chetan Jawan, Associate Editor of the Hindustan Times. Welcome to all of you. Um, Nilodpal, your party has, an, has a mayor in Shimla. So has that given you, a, has that given you and your uh, associate party the Philip to take more than keen interest in the elections this time in Himachal? No, actually you see our uh, advance in uh, Himachal Pradesh has been steady because we had uh, good intervention in the student movement for quite some time now. And uh, naturally uh, uh, these student activists are spread all over the state. And now they are emerging as uh, important leaders of the youth movement, of the uh, Kisan movement, of the trade unions. And uh, that has uh, slowly uh, given us that kind of a structure at the local level. And all this uh, was also uh, galvanized into numerous local struggles, as you were yourself mentioning. In these elections, apart from the bigger issues, there are a large number of grassroots level issues because geographically also you know the constituencies are uh, uh, widely dispersed and, and there are local issues which, which tend to play a very big role. And we have been systematically for the last five, six years at least. For example, I tell you it is not inflation per se which is going to affect this election but specifically the price of the LPG gas cylinder. And uh, our party, for example, has fought this battle that earlier what used to happen, say a family would travel and that traveling also costs. And then after reaching the LPG store, they would find that there is no cylinder. So with the empty cylinder, they have to come all the way back. back. So there is a hidden cost. So we fought this that uh, for the uh, hill state, you have to really restructure the whole price. And uh, there have been local battles like this which has been won. For example, in the Kusumti seat next to Shimla, there are, uh, I, I mean, because export of monkeys have stopped. And you know, those varieties of monkeys, they are fertilizing very fast. So uh, our Kisan Sabha, they have fought a very prolonged battle on uh, uh, addressing this question because uh, uh, thousands of crores of uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, agricultural uh, products and these uh, crops have been destroyed. Women cannot come out. So uh, uh, 
we have really gone deep into the issues. We have uh, and and raised questions, and that has translated into a, not just a small victory. It was a triangular contest. Both our mayoral and the deputy mayoral candidates won by more than six thousand votes. <laughs> So, so obviously, it is not just the municipal election uh, results, but the entire sequence of events which led to that victory that will have an impact. We are contesting 15 seats along with our allies. We have a uh, alliance called um, Himachal Pradesh Lok Manch, Lok Morcha. So that is contesting all the 16 seats. Okay, uh, Chetan, you being a local. Uh, being uh, being from Himachal Pradesh, how far does uh, you know what Nilotpal was saying? Does this third front have any uh, has has it made any impact? Uh, <clears throat> like uh, CPIM traditionally has been one or two seats. It may retain the same number or slightly increase, but the Himachal uh, Lokit Party, which is headed by Mr. Meshwar Singh, who was four time MP and a BJP state president. I think it will have an impact and the coalition can have a say in formation of the next government because if the contest is very close, if you see that traditionally in the last election about 50% of seats were won by a margin of less than 4,000 4, votes. 4,000 votes, yes. So very, very close contest and this time with the percentage of voting being about 70%. It, you know, according to what the election commission was just now saying, it, it's going to cross 74%. I, this was... 73% they are saying and yeah. it's climbing. So, still, the, the, I think the contest will be very close. Mm. In this, that scenario, uh, I think the coalition, uh, CPIM and uh, Mishra Singh's party will have an important role to play. On issues, uh, the yeah, very, very interesting what uh, Nilotpal was pointing out, issues like monkeys, you know, if, uh, and all these things, which we don't get to hear, you know, when, uh, when people dis discuss elections in Himachal. We don't know what are the local issues. Everybody talks about apples and things like that, but, you know, these are very interesting issues which he's raising. No, there are many. Monkeys is a, because earlier it used to be only restricted to Shimla. Yeah. Now the monkeys have spread to the entire, uh, entire state and the and damage they are doing to the horticulture produced is huge and immense. Okay. And the amount of labor people have to employ and you are not allowed to kill them. It's a crime. So it's a huge problem. Apart from that, many areas, the huge problem of uh, <coughs> the transportation of goods is also becoming a huge problem. The roads have not grown. It used to grow earlier. So the transportation you produce to the nearest market is also a big issue. Mm. And apart from that, the power. Himachal is a power surplus state to everybody. Yes. But in the last few years, we are witnessing a power cuts regularly, not maybe not in Shimla, maybe not in Manali, the tourist spots, but in villages, there is a power cut. So for a power surplus state, power is a big issue. How, how, how has it happened? Is it because of mismanagement? What it is, is it? It totally because of mismanagement because with the increasing uh, connections, the demand has increased and the state government has not been able to uh, augment the services. And uh, because earlier, like in Shimla district, about only 50 to 60 percent of villages had electricity connection. Now over 90 percent have. So the demand has increased, whereas the augmentation has not taken place. So there are many issues which are linked with people. Like in Lower Himachal, the issue of uh, the producers, the mangoes with which they grow, oranges they grow, they are not able to get the benefit of the produce which the apple growers get. Okay. So these are sort of issues which the people are raising. Okay, uh, whatever, 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 whatever. Allow me just a quick uh, comment on this uh, higher percentage. You see, here also clearly the presence of this uh, third alternative is very much felt because there was a voter fatigue with uh, Congress and BJP alternating and coming to office and more or less replicating uh, each other's policies. So, uh, the kind of uh, people centric issues that uh, we have been able to throw up and our expectation was also this that there will be a larger turnout because uh, one seat I can tell you our state secretary is contesting in Thiog against Vidya Stokes who happens to be also our, his aunt. Now uh, uh, day before yesterday Sitaram attended a rally and uh, the locals are saying after uh, Chief Minister Parmar who was the first uh, Chief Minister of the state is the uh, ever largest rally. So. Our campaign will may not always 
translate into vote for us, but definitely it is yeah. going to Have impact, impact the discourse, political discourse in the state. Okay, so uh, Smita, Smita, the, the larger issue, the larger issue of you know, Virbhadra Singh, the Congress has not projected him as the prime chief ministerial candidate, but still you know there is this inbuilt agreement that okay he may be the candidate but you know with with all those allegations which which came out again but that doesn't seem to have made much impact you think no i mean firstly i think the congress had no option veer bhadra singh is obviously their tallest leader which is why they were compelled to send him despite the he had to step down as minister of steel in delhi right uh, i mean before these uh, current uh, allegations yes. came up and um, I, I don't know how much uh, store one should set by a recent poll that was done, but it showed that <clears throat> Mr. Veer Bhadra Singh and Prem uh, Dhumal, who Dhumal. is the current BJP chief minister, that there was only one percentage point difference in their popularity. Right. I mean, Mr. Dhumal, one percent ahead. ahead. So obviously, um, he is perceived differently in Himachal Pradesh. Um, to get down to the core issues, the fact is the BJP initially tried to make the issue of corruption the big issue, right. especially against Veer Bhadra Singh. But subsequently, there were allegations against some of Dhum Mr. Dhumal's ministers. Then, Gadkari. of course, the Mr. Gadkari. Yes. Mr. Gadkari, uh, as BJP president, he went for one rally, which was, I think, somewhere in some border district. After that, he was told not to come back. Right. So then that, I think the corruption issue, in a sense, got neutralized. So the BJP then tried to turn it onto the price issue. Uh, Mr. Basu just mentioned, uh, you know, the LPG issue LPG. being a core issue. So, in fact, I think the BJP, I believe, has even um, not only can, focused on it. But that can, that can, that can hurt them also. That yeah, no. So that's they have they have been in government for the last five years. Yeah, but so they, what they have offered is free induction stoves okay, yeah. as an alternate to LPG. You know, so they are trying to focus on um, high <laughs> prices and putting the blame on the center, trying to get central issues rather than, you know, move the conversation away from local issues to central issues. Nila, and blaming. do you think the issue of corruption has got neutralized following what happened as, as uh, Smita was pointing out? Look, we mustn't forget that Himachal is a highly literate state and some of the national issues, they are perceived there in a manner in which they are not perceived in other states. B, there is a lot of local corruption. Right. And you know, one refrain which even our reporters would keep hearing when they went to Himachal was, Pahar bech diya. Mm. Huh? Mm. You know, so that is a local issue. Mm. So there, there, is a, there is a corruption discourse out there in the state. And how much of it, you know, how much of the national corruption issues get meshed with the local corruption issues, that has to be seen. And who it goes against, you know. That is also a moot point. For instance, there the BJP government is on the defensive, on the local corruption issues. Mm. You know, on this thing of Pahar Bechna. You know, all these I things happen. Shall I add? Yeah. Yes, please. I think... I think did you uh, people... You know, my question is, did you people focus on the corruption of the state government at all? Or? Absolutely. Did and you really I, I really, with uh, great respect to Smita otherwise, but I think the corruption issue as it has played out in the elections is not as we perceive from Delhi. Uh, it is not as if uh, it is cancelling out. Actually, you see, the issue is not uh, Birbhadra or uh, Dhumal, but their sons. Uh, the chief minister's son is an issue in the election. And so is Vikramaditya Singh, who is uh, Birbhadra Singh's son. I mean, you open the TV and uh, always you see his interviews going on. So question is, there has been a lot of corruption and that is also policy driven. You see, it is related to privatization. What As he talks about. Nila, Nila was trying to point out. Yes. You see, I will give you a simple example. Now, Himachal is a small state. 17 private universities has been established during uh, Dhumal uh, 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 period. Out of that 13 private universities have come up in a single district. Uh, called uh, Solan. Solan. And out of that, in one panchayat area, uh, there is it's actually three universities which has come up. The JP group has opened a university which has 1,000 acres of land. So these privatization projects, and I will uh, very much agree with what uh, Chetan was saying so about punish. power. 
one of the major activities in the power sector of the Himachal government has been to large scale hand over the Heidel power generation resources to the private sector. So that is the, I mean, uh, in terms of uh, projected okay. augmentation uh, of power no, plants, uh, but this is actually turning out to be land grab and that Nilat, is why Nilat, people Nilat, are telling Nilat, we need to, Nilat, we we'll, we'll continue this discussion. We need to go into a short break now. Please keep watching. We'll come back and continue this discussion. Welcome back. Himachal Pradesh went to polls today and we are discussing and taking stock of the situation there. Uh, Nilotpal, you are talking about uh, these uh, private universities yeah. and, uh, and all and that. Other, and other and issue, I think, I think uh, Smita, you wanted to make a point at that. No, uh, just I will add one more point. There also I totally agree with Chetan when he said about uh, this agricultural products and their prices. Now, this is also related to a policy shift because earlier the government used to provide a lot of support in terms of marketing, in terms of storage and so on and so forth. But that is being constantly on decline, both horticulture as well as agriculture. Well, give an example. And, and, and therefore, yes, yes, Chetan. And, 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 and one second, one second, let him, let that him. has got linked with uh, the opening up of this sector of uh, uh, distribution and uh, actually procurement uh, to two private sector okay. uh, and that is also affecting the prices. Oh, like for Apple, uh, the government buys the minimum sport price for Apple. Can you imagine it is only 4 rupees and it was 2 rupees, rupees per kilo per kilogram and it was about 2 rupees 10, 10 12 years ago. So it has only doubled in the last 10 15 years. So how can the government support farmers and increase the market with such a small Price they For other producers also, like flowers also, this is a huge trade of uh, flowers from Himachal. Uh, there also the government documentation is extremely poor. Mm. The cold chain the government is saying for the FDI we have to set up, the entire private sector, Adani Group and others have set up, the government has totally failed in providing facility to horticulture. Horticulture is the biggest financial support of Himachal. The Himachal the economy or if you say the per capita income has almost doubled in the last 10, 15 years. It is only because of horticulture, no other reason. Yeah, anyway, uh, uh, Nilab, it's very interesting, you know, we have had this turnstile government in uh, Himachal. Since 1990, it's been alternating between Congress and BJP, BJP, Congress. Now, what happened in Punjab? This time, in, in, where Punjab also was having this kind of alternate governments of the, of the two parties. But now you think that kind of a, uh, there is some amount of uh, impact of what happened in Punjab in Himachal, it's, it's a neighboring state? It's not so much uh, the impact of Punjab. What is likely to happen is, you know, Punjab, there were two anti incumbency factors operating. One was against the center, the other was against the state. Right. And that against the center prevailed. Similarly, in Himachal also, my hunch is that there are these two anti-incumbency factors operating. I mean, it's focused, for instance, as far as center is concerned, on the gas LPG cylinder issue and uh, inflation. As far as the local anti-incumbency is concerned, it is focused on what uh, Nilotpal was saying, policy-driven corruption and also regional imbalance right. within Himachal, you know, between the plain region and, and the upper and, upper upper and lower upper. Himachal, what is called in popular parlance. And BJP's strong point is lower Himachal. Virbhadra, so the Congress's strong area is upper Himachal. And it remains to be seen as to, you know, how much are they going to capitalize or maximize on their support in these two regions. There are two other factors we are forgetting, is the dissension a, within the BJP and dissension to a lesser ex extent within the Congress, Congress, which was there earlier, yes. but seemed to have minimized as the campaign went along. But within the BJP, you know, Anurag Thakur <coughs> is an issue. The sun is an issue. And there are younger elements in the BJP, for instance, Nadda, you know, Jagat Prakash Nadda, Jagat Prakash Nadda. who Nadda. think that if Dhumal comes back this time, 
you know, it's somewhere at the back of their mind. I won't say it's quite open. But if Dhumal comes back, Anurag will, is Anurag the will you know, then the line of succession would be. Then also there is a point of rivalry between the two sons of. Uh, Singh the, no, no, between the two sons of, of Dhumal himself. Dhumal himself. <laughs> you know, because of this, you know, the, what we were talking about informally, you know, because of the distribution of largest between the two. And this, this is in BJP also, there is a huge distinct that people who have been with BJP for so many years, they are also opposing the sons. But the sun the rise rise sun here, I would like to make a point. If anybody has gone to actually cover Himachal Pradesh elections, the most heartening feature for us is that young people, I mean, our people who have actually gone there and campaigned, I say, Nowhere uh, in the country, perhaps, the youth is attracted towards the red flag in the manner that we see today. That, we will, that, we, will, that we will wait and see how, how, what kind of percentage of the votes which you, your party will get. And anyway, Smita, uh, coming to the, again the larger issue, why, did, uh, why do you think the Congress refrained from you know, appoint, I mean, naming uh, Veerbhadar Singh as the chief ministerial candidate? Or do they have any other chief ministerial candidate then? There may be, but uh, I think the, the for one, there were corruption charges against Veer Bhadra, and secondly, they ma they make it a uh, it's a policy practice that unless it's a incumbent, incumbent chief, minister, yes. chief minister, they don't name the candidate. But, but I just wanted but, to refer to something Mr. Basu said. I wasn't suggesting that corruption is not an issue for the people, but in the campaign of the BJP and the Congress. For them, they, did not, of, they did they, not focus on yeah, it because it would be... Beyond the point. Beyond for the, the other parties, certainly, for yes. those parties of the third front, of course it, it, it was an issue because uh, they don't face any incumbency <laughs> <laughs> or, you know... Absolutely, uh, yeah. Charges. Chetan, Chetan the, the issue of uh, BJP, you, you're talking about the problems within the BJP. But Dumal is is the unquestioned leader of, of BJP now since he has been the chief minister for the last five years. So you think that has had its own benefit for the BJP? No, you cannot forget in much of the Shantakumar factor. Shant yes. <laughs> huh. Shantakumar is a highly respected leader. Yes. Though because of his policy once the BJP went out because of no work, no pay policy. Yes. But Shantakumar within the party... Is he, does, that, he, does he continue to be a... F Major factor. Kangra is the biggest district in Himachal. The right. most number of seats are in Kangra. And he has a lot of respect in Kangra. Whether it will be translated into votes or not has to be seen. But within the party, more than Congress in the last five years, it was Mr. Shanta Kumar, Maheshwar Singh, who provided opposition to Dhumal. Congress was virtually missing in Himachal. Uh, and uh, the BJP leaders were. And the reason was that one of the Congress leaders was related to Mr. Dhumal also. And there was sort of a match fixing, <laughs> there was allegation of a match fixing between Congress and the BJP. And then Shantakumar, Maheshwar Singh and others made a viable opposition and they raised the issue of corruption by the family members of Mr. Dhumal and some leaders of uh, BJP. Mm. So, but one issue which, which we have f forgotten because Himachal is a very young state. As Mr. Uh, <clears throat> Basu was saying that large number of young people have been attracted towards trade. But unemployment in Himachal is an extremely big issue in elections okay. because about 50% of voters are less than 35 years of age. So I think the parties have tried to address the issue, but it will have an impact on the outcome. The BJP was not able what to generate... What, what has been the last five years, what has been the performance of the BJP as far as creating employment, creating industries are concerned? When BJP came up with this plank that they are okay providing, inviting foreign, uh, sorry, private investment, okay. There was an agreement signed that 70% of employment or 80% will be given to locals. Right. People have filed RTIs and found out that not even 10 to 15% of employment was given to locals. Okay. So in many constituencies, many areas like in Badi's industrial area in Solon, there this is an issue. In other industrial areas, there is an issue. Where the private investment has come, it has become an issue that they have taken over our land. But they haven't provided jobs to locals. And I think addition, uh, one addition, small addition, what he is saying is absolutely correct. That you see, because of these uh, private companies which has come in, they are unlike the old type uh, employment. Because Himachal earlier, traditionally, there was a huge employment in the government sector, yes. which has come down. So the new employment has this harsh... Uh, Conditions. Sort of, uh, conditions and there has been a lot of retrenchment. So 
Himachal, I mean, though it is not uh, reported so much in the national media, but uh, several very big uh, trade union struggles also have been uh, there, uh, especially on these hydro projects. So this uh, uh, power, you know, what uh, Chetan was talking about, uh, Nila, about power projects, you know, a surplus power state having problems with power. And this 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 is something which uh, you know we we the national media has not focused on. We don't know how, how far do you think it will have an impact on these elections? Well, it is going to have an impact, but how things work <coughs> out, you know, and ultimately which factor weighs over the other. Apart from power, we must also realize there have been a lot of other local level struggles in Himachal, you know. For instance, I personally saw, I went to the JP area and the damage they were causing there, you know, because by the tunneling, this tunneling technology of river. And it was a big issue in that area, in Kinnor, I mean, towards Kinnor, beyond Ramgarh when you go there. So, and even village, ordinary village people would talk about it. You know, what about the say, Chetan, this is Heidel Power project which uh, Nilo, uh, Nilotpal was talking about yeah. earlier. Yeah, this is a huge issue because the state government, uh, Clear the project by breaking into small sections. One big project into small sections and clear the for, project. For, for giving contracts? In the environment clearance. Okay. If state government gave the environment clearance, if the entire project would have been considered, then it would have come to the central government, okay. the Ministry of Environment. So the broke of the project into small, this thing and clear the environment clearance. The Marshall High Court stuck down the clearance. Right. But these, apart from the big project, the small projects in Chamba district, Number of small hydro projects are coming up. There are a lot of local opposition. In most part of it is, if you can compare it with Uttaranchal also, because small hydro projects in Uttaranchal were posed by people. Right. In Himachal also, there is a huge opposition because the water being taken away for, is for irrigation or for drinking purposes. In hills, in many areas, in summer months, getting a, a drop of water is a problem. Okay. Huh. And not and only for water, you see, these projects are actually projecting a huge amount of land requirement and virtually there is unavoidable displacement and there is no what about rehabilitation? proper rehabilitation project. So rehabilitation, but I think the first problem is that the water which is used for horticulture, agriculture has been taken away. Okay. There is no reassurance that you will get water. Displacement, the people, the compensation has been given has not been adequate. and, and and the policy has not been very transparent and clear. The people have been accusing the government that the policy has been not transparent. The public consultation, which is must, has been done in a very hey hey manner. So people have a problem with huge number of hydro projects, which come not only hydro projects, other industrial projects no, which have also come tell up. Me, tell me, is it party specific? These kind of problems, do do people see it so as hydro a party projects, specific? Uh, this hydro projects thing, mostly most of these projects came up during the BJP regime. Okay. The Congress earlier, there were big hydro projects which came. The private participation was much lesser. Okay. They were early NTPC projects or the Government of India. NHPC. Yeah, NHPC projects. But <clears throat> the private participation in the, the, in the last five industrial years. activity has increased a lot. People have got jobs also, but like I was speaking to my friend in Kangada a few days ago, he was saying that the people are opposed to this monopoly of few people in the region to do, get the things done. The contracts. It contracts and everything. That even if you have to get a small transfer done, it is a one guy in a district or two guys in a district will get it done. Uh, otherwise, earlier it used to be that you can walk to a it, minister's it was, office and it get it done. It was, it was an open and transparent system okay. earlier. Okay. Now, now another issue which I want to flag before we uh, close is that, you know, the this whole the election commission's attitude of having these elections, you know, with, with so much gap between two elections. Now today the Himachal elections have ended, December 13th with the next election, in, uh, the Gujarat election takes place. People of Himachal will have to wait for one and a half months to get results. In Nirodpal, first your thoughts on this? So we uh, went and met the election commission a uh, few days back in relation to certain issues in Bengal. So we were informally discussing with them. The impression that we uh, got is this is the um, maximum limit to which uh, they can uh, uh, postpone Himachal election. I mean, they are uh, um, treating Gujarat as a given and then... Adjusting the to, Himachal. Yeah, 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 yeah. That is the approach could, that could it, has, could it not have been the other way around? Uh, I don't know. I mean, really, uh, I mean, other people can say, but Gujarat also maybe uh, that... Uh, 
it could not have been brought uh, really that much earlier because uh, there has to be a gap between because this festive season uh, yeah, is Diwali, there, no? Season. After Diwali, you have to give some amount of time. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I think that Smita, you, you, you yeah, I think has so. there I been think a discussion? What do the, the what do the, what do the political the parties, major political parties, think on these things? Are they reconciled? I don't, to I don't, I don't think it's been an issue at all. Because we need to try to raise the issue that the campaign the period in Himachal yeah. was very less. Yes. But so the weather, there's a weather. There is, weather is issue. Weather, weather is, is an issue. issue. Yeah. I mean, it couldn't have been held later. No. But no. the question is whether Gujarat Already could have been held earlier. Places have become very cold. Very cold. I mean, yes. I mean it's very, very good that despite all that, uh, such a percentage of. Nila, you know, this one and a half month gap, two month gap before before results is something you know, is, is is quite an uncomfortable thing. Yeah, the gap is uncomfortable, but. You know, there are certain things like he was talking of festival. Navratra is a big thing in Gujarat. Mm. You know, so if you advance the elections ahead, you know, then there is a problem of uh, security, the machinery. The election is a participatory <laughs> process. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So ultimately, it's uh, you have to get people into the whole thing. Right. right. So unless there is some, but at some point of time, you are right. We'll have to think of delinking. Many elections, you know. Yeah, why? Here the know, point the, was the, that the, 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 the results. How much? Yeah. They postpone the date of the results of the Himachal polls so that it does not influence Gujarat. Influence Gujarat. That's right. That's but a you know, simple. The question is, does it? You would have questioned. You know, as, 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 as I think, it's questionable because yeah. now election results are becoming so localized yeah. that and you have even grant, national elections. Yeah. I mean, you have to grant a degree of maturity to the electorate. You know, to the people of India. How far that presumption that Himachal may influence Gujarat is valid, I think it is open to question. But that's interesting but, but actually. That could, could be the only reason because otherwise... No, that's the reason. That's that's the reason. But I am saying there, whether yeah. that premise is valid or not, I mean that is so, open to question. So, you know, that is something actually we need to discuss because you have this one and a half month gap. Why should the people of Himachal Pradesh that's go to polls and, you know, and then wait for be, one and a half months? Yes, for the and there time. might be an unnecessary problem because of the high decibel level these days in I mean, politics. Marshall. You know, ultimately there might be some questions about the result itself. This was yeah. the time for rigging. You know, you. No, not only that. Not only that. that. You know, another thing which I would like to flag on this: you have one and a half months. Here is a government which is a dead. You know. Uh, with a dead duck, you know, for next one and a half month, this government which is there is not a in, in that way a legitimate government. It is still it's a go so if something happens, if the decisions, the major decisions are taken, are there are those legitimate decisions? Or the another interesting issue is when a code of conduct comes into place, the code of conduct ends the day of the polling, right? Yeah. So the code of conduct is no more uh, valid mm -hmm. from now till the till the results. Mm -hmm. So the governments can go ahead and take decisions. Yeah, Politically, actually, yes. actually, this is a big issue. I think this is a real serious issue because the government is there and there is no accountability is no formally accountability. for whatever they do. But on the other hand, constitutionally or legally, I mean, uh, they are uh, uh, free entitled to, to act. act yeah, absolutely. Yes, that's a problem. That's a big problem. That is why I was saying that at some point of time, we have to think of a mechanism by which elections are delinked and many other considerations don't come into the play. Earlier, you know, if you remember those days, there was synchronization of the national election and the state so assembly that, uh, election. 67 that after got, 67 that uh, they got delinked. And anyway. Mr. Adwani is one of the yes, proponents so I have been talking yes, about, you know. Yeah, so at some point the reflection of, of the yeah. vibrancy or the new type of features that have yeah, yeah. Uh, so been, been injected into Indian to politics. Take into account all these things, and I mean, I mean it's good that you've started the debate. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, mean, I think you, it's, I don't think one should question the dates of yeah. the elections, yeah. but certainly the date of okay. the results. The results yeah. it, it is, is something the, which needs to be discussed, discussed you know? yeah. because this is a major issue. This one and a half months, how legitimate is this government, government to take right. decisions? You know, major decisions. No, it, 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 and it, what is the accountability? What's the accountability? Most, most important, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Okay. Anyway, I think we have come to the end of the uh, discussion on this. Uh, that was a very interesting discussion. We'll have to wait, as we were discussing, for one and a half months to see what, who has uh, finally prevailed in Himachal Pradesh. Uh, meanwhile, the Gujarat elections, election campaign will pick up heat in the next week or so. We will be back discussing Gujarat very soon. Please keep watching. 
Thank you very much. Thanks to all my guests, Nilotpal Basu, Smita Gupta, Nilab Mishra and Chetan Chauhan. We will come back with another issue on the big picture, same time tomorrow.